Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. I'm going to play a little today, so I thought I'd just pop the camera on in case anyone's interested to see what's going on. I recently got this in the mail, something I ordered from Michaels. I found that sometimes with Michaels, I can get things online for delivery only that I can't get in store or I can get it cheaper if I have it shipped. So this is a set of 24 of their Craft Smart acrylic paint set, acrylic paint value set. It was a pretty good value because not only was it inexpensive, but it was also on sale or clearance or something. I used my 20% off coupon, something along those lines. But I wanna play with paints today. I have a long, believe me, I have a long list of things I have to do and I should do and I need to do. But today, in the spirit of Christmas and fun and crafting, I'm going to do what I want to do. And what I want to do is when I cut out all the different cards to make the envelopes and the cards and whatnot for my scrappy fabric cards, there's these little pieces left over. So I've been cutting them up and I keep them in this little envelope called thank you notes. And what I want to do is I want to water down the paints a little bit and paint them on there. I had cards somewhere. Here they are. Here they are. I was playing before I got these paints in, and I was playing with some stamps that I came in. You probably saw these if you follow me on Instagram. But I wanted to make these little thank you notes that I can put in the um, in with any of the orders, or if I get a thank you, if I send a thank you out for when you guys send me some scrap fabrics or salvages, just cause I can leave some of them blank without thank you, so I can write a little note on them. But I like the look of this, and it's fine with the stamps and stuff like that, but you can see that they're stamps. And I want this look, but I want it to be blended. So let's see if I can get that by adding a little bit of water to these paints. I mean, there's just so many fun colors. They have from white all the way to black with several different shades of everything in between. There's even a holiday green. Uh, that hopefully that'll look like Christmas trees. So I'm going to try this out first as straight paint and just see what it looks like because why not? And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of water and see what happens. I have an old towel. I use this towel for when I make, what do I make? I want to make handmade paper, which I haven't done in a long time. So I'm really wanting to get into it. But here is my thank you note. I got the uh, thank you stamp. It's from Mountainside Crafts on Etsy. I'm really into the Michaels brand, Craft Smart. So this is a dye ink pad. I also, I have been collecting little things. So I have some other dyes here that I can use, but I really like, so I was thinking with the thank you, I really like the thought of having the dark black against the colorful. And as you may notice, I have a Flamingo stamp, but I don't know if I'm gonna put that on here or not. So I'm just going to make a couple to start with just to see how they look with the paint. So let me see if I can find this one must be, does it say on here? Holiday green. I mean, that's a really bright label, but the green inside doesn't look that bright. Oh, they all have safety plastic thing on. Oh my goodness. I mean, I totally get it and I'm glad for it, but... At least I'll know which ones I've tried or not, because those are the ones that won't have the little plastic on it. I picked these up at the Dollar Tree. They come to a couple of them in a pack, three or four in a pack. I don't know. It's just a nice little palette. I don't need to work with too many. I think too many colors would be too much, but I do want to like line this whole towel up eventually with cards once I figure out how I want to do it. And then that way I can just make them all at the same time. And I can pull out a couple of these if I want. Like it matters where I put it, right? So I'm just gonna put three drops, close the lid, just to make sure when I wanna add some water to it to see what it looks like. Now I have a little foam brush and I have a paint brush. Oh look, it's Craft Smart. Picked it up at Michael's when Robbie was into, a little dusty, when Robbie was into painting many, many years ago, he was probably eight and now he's 21. So it's definitely a while ago. I've got a cup of water that you probably can't see back there. And let me add with that green, let's do bright pink. Because bright pink goes with flamingos. And I think, well, I'll probably definitely learn more about colors doing this and which ones blend to make which kind of colors. 
But I thought this was really great because I... This one's got paint on it. I don't, um... Nothing's leaking. I don't really know how much these are at Michael's, but I know I didn't pay $24 for them, so they were less... I want to say I paid $14.99 before I got my 20% discount. And these are probably maybe $0.69 cents each. I don't know. It's, I didn't bother looking that up. I figured it got shipped to my house for free, and I got it for a nice discount, so I'm happy. And like I said, my bucket of water to do it. So let me go ahead and get some. I have baby wipes in case I make a mistake, but I need some paper towels, so give me a second. Paper towels is one of the things that my Walmart and other grocery stores, Publix, they are out of a lot around here now. I noticed earlier in the pandemic that that happened. So during the summer when we were actually allowed to purchase them because they were in the store, every time I went to the store, I bought one or two rolls just to make sure like, here we are again, you can't buy toilet paper very easily. Napkins, I have a hard time buying napkins and paper towels. So I have some extra rolls, so it's a good thing so I can play with them. Otherwise, I would just go ahead and use a washcloth because I don't use, I have a bath poof, so we don't use washcloths. And I have, I have the old ones that you clean with, which would be fine to do crafts with. All right, so let's see what this stuff looks like. For someone who does fabric crafts and doesn't really do painting stuff, I sure seem to collect a lot of things. I pick these paintbrushes up one point or another. I'm pretty sure I would have picked these up at the Dollar Tree, which means they're not going to be the best. I'm not making a Mona Lisa. I'm just making little thank you cards, so I don't need them perfect. But I'm thinking I might want something a little smaller to start with. All right, let's get a little pink. Let's see what that does. Yeah, see how... Well, first of all, I love the way the brush makes those strokes like that but that is a bit stronger in color than I was looking for. I make sure I don't spill my water though because I'm still on my craft table with everything important around me. I wanted a very light watercolored pastel. Now eventually I may end up, if this doesn't work, I will have plenty of paint to play with, but I want to, if I have to, I will pick up some actual watercolors. I bought the kind like I bought Robbie for school and stuff. Look, just adding a little bit of water to that already kind of helped. So let me go ahead and dip. I have an old cup from Tijuana Flats from when my daughter worked there. Add a little bit of water to it. I have plenty of cards that I can play with. I don't mind... Of course, my water is already turning muddy, but I don't mind if it's a little bit blended. I really just want a nice light color. So I'm going to practice on this one since it's already here. Oh yeah, that is definitely a lot of liquid. Now for those of you that paint, you're probably already laughing at me because, hey, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Because, you know, maybe I need to do something like this. And that way you just make one. Got it on my finger already, right? I am not a clean crafter. So I'm looking for something like this, a little bit darker, that kind of will, it'll show the color and not have the white coming through. Maybe I need a little more paint. At two or three drops at a time, I've got plenty to play with. Thankfully, paint is not one of those things that are running low anywhere. Maybe I need to be like you do when you do, um, maybe I, I try when you do the, come on, I've got words, when you're staining wood and you put it on and then wipe it off. And this doesn't have any gloss finish to it, so I'm thinking I'm going to have to give it a nice iron afterwards, give it a good press because the ones that I tried, I tried adding water after I stamped on this one. And it, it's okay, but since I didn't press it, you could see it's got all of the little bumpity bumpities and stuff. It's not smooth. And I think that's reasonably okay. It's not quite what I was looking for. 
but maybe it's just because I'm using such a dark color also. So let's try another color. Oh, we didn't try pink yet. Let me get that pink on there and give that a try. Just having the water on the brush just seems to be almost enough. Dab it off. Yeah, so it's definitely not what I'm looking for. It's giving me just more of a mottled mess. I really do like how the ink pads do it. I wonder, can you take an ink pad? They're hard to open. If I take an ink pad and a brush, wouldn't want to add, oh, now I'm just getting all hairs from the brush on it. Okay, so that doesn't work, but I'm kind of looking for something like that. It's just something I want to play with and keep trying until I get what I want. I'll have to go ahead and get... la di da di da So I don't know, I just think like this time of year, it's really fun to see what they have even if you're just going into like the kids department, there's always fun kinds of Christmas crafts around for them to play with. Well, let's compare green with green, right? So this is lime green and this is apple tart. They both look like a light color. Oh, we'll skip looking green like green. Let's get some blue out. Good job for the seam ripper. For those of you who do this, I'm sure you're gonna have plenty of ideas for me down in the comments. And you know, some of you may even say like wear vinyl gloves or something. Well, why wear gloves? Then my fingers won't look like I touched a rainbow. All right, get a little blue. Oh, I really love this blue. Can you guys see that blue? That's very pretty. I don't wanna mix the colors up, but then again, I'm gonna put them in a container so it's okay. But for right now, I'm like, don't mix the colors up. Let's see what this blue looks like all on its own. Yeah, I like the paleness of that. Add a little bit of water to it. Just enough to make it watercolory. I think if I really want to do this a lot, I'm gonna end up having to get watercolors, but it's fun trying, right? Maybe the sponge brush does better. So is a layering the trick to this? Like you have to put a layer on, let it dry, and then add the next color? See, I like, oh, I really like this blue. It's a very pretty blue. Looks like I need to increase my foam stamp collection, uh, my foam brushes, I mean. Add a bit of the pink. Yeah, see, that's the look I'm going for. So maybe it was just the fact that I was using the wrong brushes. And thankfully, this is all water-based, fast-drying, acrylic paint. So my towel can go through the wash and my fingers will be clean soon. Dare I? Yes, I dare. Just going to go ahead and suck up all that green. Let me try it over here first. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's what I'm looking for. That's the thing. So I need to pick up more foam brushes. I think that's what I'm looking for. Let me add a little bit of, ooh, there's some pretty oranges. I wish there was a, where's my colors? Where's my lightest purple? So they have Purple and violet, but they don't have light. So I can add a little white to it, right? So add a little white. And 
Then after this dries, I'll have to give it a quick iron and see what it looks like there. It's, it's basically throwaway paper anyways. You know, it's not stuff I was going to use for anything else. I have some long skinny ones that I thought would be fun for bookmarks. So I have violet and purple. So violet and purple. We'll do purple. I mean, I have enough colors of everything to make whatever colors I need. So that's not a problem. I don't see the need to purchase anything lighter. I can always add more white. And even with a couple drops of white, it's going to last a long time. Let's do, oh, one big drop because that's what's coming out. Clean my brush. And I know that you can also cut your foam brushes to have it, you know, so I can cut it and make it narrower if I want. They probably have narrower ones or I could just probably get cheap sponges from the Dollar Tree. Maybe I'll mix it with this and then just cut those into slivers that I can use. Keep my Dollar Tree in there nice all and happy. And let's see. Oh yeah, need that a little darker. So this has taken me maybe a total of what, maybe a half hour or something, get everything set up, make the video for you and talk to you, and then go ahead and clean everything up. And I think a half hour out of my busy day when I should be doing things, that I think that's a good compromise. I think that's fine. That I can allow myself that little bit of time to play and have some fun. I mean, we, we don't have to just allow our kids to enjoy themselves. We can have a little bit of fun ourselves. I can even do my nails, see that? Oh, I like that, so pretty. So the goofiness in me comes out occasionally, that's okay. So I, I like, I like, I really like that. What else can we do? We can do some purple and orange, purple and, purple and ocean breeze. And me, just like a child, I do make sure whatever I buy is washable. I did get the permanent ink because, I don't know, I bought that for something else. Oh, I bought alphabet stamps. So I bought that for the alphabet stamps and I wanted to, I don't know, I just thought it was what you had to buy, you know. So I keep a running list in my phone of things that I would like to buy, need to buy, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna add the foam brushes to it. And a plastic tablecloth. I think that might be something important. And I don't wanna dilute this blue too much. I really like that ocean. So I'm just gonna put a little, little bit of a dab. Maybe a toothpick or something would work for mixing these together and I don't even have to really mix them all together because it's a white card so any of that white would just disappear anyway okay this brush just fits this foam brush fits perfectly in there sucks it right up I've seen people where they hold it and I can kind of understand why it gives you better control over what you're doing. And I, I received a thank you one. I thought of, I was thinking about doing this prior, but then when I saw a thank you note that came in one of my Etsy orders, I'm like, yes, that's what I was looking for. She only did around the edges with a brown color. Then she did a stamp of a thank you and then signed her name. I tried signing my name and it is a total mess. So we're gonna skip my handwritten part and just do something like this. See, I like that, I like that. I've got one more spot, so before I let you go, I'm gonna go ahead and do a yellow. 
Then I'm going to get this nice and dry, and I'm going to put my thank you stamp on it so you guys can see what the finished one looks like compared to all of the mess that I've been making on the other ones. And we'll know how well it works when I give it a nice heat from a dry iron. And I'll put a piece of paper towel on top of it, or I'll press it from the back, whatever, just to make sure that you know I don't have a ironing board that has all the pretty colors. I'll put... I don't even know that we need to water this one down at all. I mean, I will, I mean, white it down at all because that's already a nice light color. Ay, ay, ay. Definitely need more brushes. I have to look in my closet too to see if I have any first. I use these for so many different little projects. And since the foam will hold the water, it's going to stay nice and wet in there already so that when I go ahead and add it to the brush first it sucks that paint right up but it turns it a little bit more watercolory like i liked and then i can just fill in those spaces Ooh, that's definitely wet just give that little yellow overcast to it looks very easter to me look at that Okay, I do like that. I can add a little bit more purple here and there. Pick up some more of that blue and green and let's just make it a muddy mess. That's the thing, it's like, gotta stop Robin. No one to stop. I just didn't want all my purple to get covered up. So what I can do is set this guy aside. And then so I have this left in my palette, right? So let's start light to dark. Ooh, what a mess. Then add in some what's left of the blue. Pick up a little pink. Got a lot of purple in there. Oh yeah, so that's what you do when you want an absolute muddy mess. But look, I tried something new, right? And now I know what I like and what I don't like. It still looks very Eastery because of the colors. But I wonder if that would make a nice background for something else. Like, I think this would be nice if you take a fine ink pen and draw a tree. We could go totally crazy, clean the brush. Before we put everything away, let's just open up one more color. We don't have any orange. We don't have any of a lot of them. We got 24 colors to try out, but let's try a little orange. And let's dare to be crazy, right? We already made a mess and we're already like, mm, I don't know if we like it. Can we do anything with it? It's awful muddy. So let me put a dot of orange. And what can I do? What can I do to make this even uglier? Or what can I do to turn it into something that I like? You seen the ones where the kids make Christmas wrapping paper and they take their cars and stuff with the big nubby tires, those big, those big uh, four by four trucks and stuff, and they run it through it and they leave the tire tracks and stuff on it. That's kind of cool. There's orange. Okay, I, I keep saying I'm gonna stop, but I can't because it's kind of fun and relaxing and a little bit exciting. And I think putting the glob in the center might not have been the best idea, but I wonder, see, even this is turning out okay. I kind of like that. I have a little bit of white there. I might want to cover up or something. I can always come through with Sharpies and stuff too, or different stamps and stamp something. It's almost looking like a bunny rabbit or a paw print or something. It's just, here's a tulip. So there's the leaves and there's a tulip and a green sky. And there's uh, something my child drew, right? We'll just pretend it was a child and not me. 
So this time, what if I put the paint on my brush? I do get into the good habit of keeping things closed and the paint's on the top of the brush. So let's see, let's add a little bit. My school colors were coral and blue. All right, voila, it's a masterpiece. You know, I laugh and say it's a masterpiece, but there are some people that do some strange things when they're painting and they call it a masterpiece. And because they have been doing this for so long that they do get the big bucks for it, right? Well, let me put everything away where I didn't find it. Oh, here's my paint set again. I'll probably put it in some type of a plastic bin just to keep it all organized, but there's just so many pretty colors in there. I really do like this ocean breeze. I would love to have like a t-shirt in that color or it's kind of like an aqua, so you can have that with the red and a white and that would make a real pretty quilt. I have a couple of swap. I, I joined a couple swaps where my colors were aqua red and white. So I have a few quilt blocks that I turned into a quilt for them and it's really pretty together. I do really love those colors together. This is a good way too to see what you like and you don't like by just kind of mixing up paints and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn you guys off for a second. I'm going to clean up all my mess. I'm going to go ahead and iron all the different pieces just to play with them a little and see what they look like, even though I'm not going to be using those. And then uh, we'll just see what looks like, what looks good and what doesn't. So I guess I need to watch some special card making videos to see how they do it. I know there's little tiny ink pads. Maybe that's what I need. I don't want to have to buy special watercolor paper because I have this paper. I need to find a use for it because the more cards I make, the more I get. And I just don't want to have that much waste. So I thought the little thank you cards would be a nice little idea. Plus there's the white on the back so you can like write a note or something. That if I can get it figured out, it could be a little something that I add into the shop or just have for myself. So I have the Craft Smart dye ink pad in black. My little thank you stamp. Baby wipes, I heard anytime you're crafting and stuff, you're supposed to have like baby wipes around. I just happen to have them anyways. It's really hard to buy Clorox wipes and stuff. So I, I like to have the baby wipes. I just pick up I get three packs of uh three yeah three packs of 80 parents choice fragrance free gentle clean and i use this in place of what i used to use the clorox wipes for if i spill something on the floor that's beyond the paper towel like in the kitchen i can use these wipes to clean it up and i also found that of course you need them when you're doing rubber stamping that it does a really great job for them so i have that now this is definitely turned into an ugly mess but I almost like this, and I almost like this, but I'm still liking these even better. So maybe I just need to get little stamp pads like this. I have pads, as you saw, but they're not small. I know there's even smaller ones, like the shape of this, I believe, that I can do this with. So maybe that's my option. But I thought a little thank you, I could, whether it's, I don't know, I, I've been adding, I added a little flamingo to the bottom of this so that fills the space. But if I just put a thank you in here, I mean, the thank you, I really love my thank you stamp. It's, it's nice. And this one's not too bad because it has a lot going on. But I did find these that it just, the big thank you on that giant car just didn't work. And we don't want thank you, thank you, thank you, because that's just tacky, right? Ooh, doggy, that's got a lot on it. I'm going to keep my tulip. I like my tulip. I'll do it on here. Get a little bit off. Okay. 
So then a little thank you on here. See, I think those those would be really sweet. And then I so I thought that was really sweet because then I can just write a little personal note on the back if I want, a little, you know, thank you for whatever. You know, thank you for your order. I hope you enjoy it. Merry Christmas. You know, whatever I happen to want to put. This, yeah, this is definitely... It reminds me of hunting with all the orange on it. So first of all, the stamp wouldn't show up very much. But that's what I was thinking. So let me know, are any of you guys card makers out there? If this is something you do, how can I get this look and have it smooth and blended so it doesn't look like I just stamped all over it? This one is kind of close. This is the one I think I hit with water. Or maybe this one. But I, I like this look. I like the pinks and the greens and the yellows together. And I like how that just leaves that nice little touch to it. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a nice light pastel look to where it's blend. But I want it to, if possible, can I get it to blend without having too much of an expense? I don't want to spend a lot of money on just a little extra craft. But I don't mind spending a little bit to have a little bit of fun and to get something in the end that maybe I could possibly put into my shop also. I heard it's very, very important. I used to watch Carol Duvall show. And they did, uh, she, if any of you guys remember her, she did multiple crafting. You could watch her show and there'd be something different every week. They still have it. I think I saw it on just basic YouTube channels as you can watch it again. So I thought those were really fun. And that's where I started seeing all the different crafts that I enjoy. So I thought it'd be fun to just do something like this. But I need a little bit of help. You can't know what to do if you don't know the craft. So I'm going to go off to YouTube, watch a little bit of that. I'm now going to take the rest of my day and do all my have tos, knowing that I had a little bit of fun. That one's not too bad, right? That one's not too, too bad. But I think this one, this one's my favorite. So something like that. It's almost patchworky, right? But hold on a second, before I let you go, let me get my pen. These are great. It's a Micron. I picked this up at Michael's when I was doing swap blocks because you can write on the block. This is a 01 archival ink and stuff like that. That let's see what we can do. We have we have our leaf. Nope, this one doesn't work. It won't write on the paint like I want it to. And I don't want to just have a sharpie sharpie. You know what I have? I have in my bucket of pens sorry I walked away while I was talking in my bucket of pens I have a sharpie gel marker it has a magnet on it so I don't want to just stick it anywhere so we can draw oh yeah that works so we got the leaf shape we got a leaf here and tulips tulips are like this Of course, this doesn't count because I don't know what I'm doing, but you know how they have where they do the basic black line drawing? They do it with quilting too when you draw on little art quilts like this so that the fabric isn't right in it, but then you kind of draw the design around it. So see, I have a tulip. I can get in trouble here. I can have a whole other craft that I don't I shouldn't get into, but I find myself enjoying my fabric crafts, but I also find myself branching out a little bit and wanting to do other things. Like I can incorporate this into an art quilt, a little wall hanging, so I can add some type of fabric paint or the inks onto it, draw on it with my sewing machine with black thread and have that same feeling, but have it be in a fabric sense versus just the painting and the stamping. So I hope you enjoyed this little extra video today. I don't want to really call it Vlogmas too much. I'm going to probably label it as that just so you know it's like, or maybe I'll put, I don't know, I'll put something. You'll know by, by the time you see this video, you'll know what I came up with. But I want to have them separate from my basic tutorials and Whip It Wednesday. But yeah, I don't know. Even this one's not too bad, but I, I can feel the paint on it. So I think... I think paint is probably not going to be my option, that I need some type of a, a stamp or some medium along those ways. 
But yeah, so thank you for hanging out with me. You're probably going to be seeing more of this type of video this month. Just totally random stuff. If you guys enjoy it, maybe I'll incorporate it into my videos into the month of next year. But I don't want to have anything set in stone that you're going to get one of these like every Thursday or something. I want it to be just something that when I'm doing something different and feeling a little creative that I can just show you guys what's going on. So thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.